In just 24 hours, humanity will begin its greatest adventure, the establishment of an outpost on the red planet Mars. Now humans will finally journey to another planet, a planet where life once may have existed, the planet our ancestors named for the god of war. It's taken us a long time to get to this historic day, but we won't be the planet's first visitors. Robots originally explored the Red Planet during the Mariner program in the 1960s. Mariner 9 of that series discovered four majestic volcanoes. The tallest, Olympus Mons, is the largest volcano in the entire solar system. Mariner 9 also found an enormous canyon system, now called Valles Marineris. These canyons are more than three times as deep as the Grand Canyon and as long as the United States is wide. The Mariner spacecraft also photographed giant dust storms, polar ice caps, and river channels, channels which once were cut by running water. Robotic landers followed during the next decade and led to a spectacular first look at the Martian surface on July 20, 1976. That's when the Viking 1 lander separated from its companion orbiter and began its descent to the western edge of Chrysi Planitia, the Plain of Gold, near the edge of an ancient channel where water once flowed. Millions of people shared the first images with excited scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Tantalizingly thin sliver yep. of picture. Yep, yep, that's it, that's it. New rocks. Oh. That's beautiful. It may not look like much, but it's lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to say something at this point. I'm just, I just, Except I just don't feel like talking. Uh, well, there are rocks. There are rocks. Yes, yes. there's rocks and uh, there's sediment, but they're, it's just, oh, it's just incredible to to see that the Mars, you know, is really there. Over 20 years would pass before we'd make our return to Mars, but when we did, we did so with a vengeance. Starting in the late 1990s, orbiters, landers, and sample return missions have studied the planet intensively. We've sent one or two spacecraft every 26 months to investigate how the planet's geology and climate have changed over time. We've also searched for evidence of present or past life on Mars, a prospect that has captured the imagination of humankind for ages. As the landers were studying the surface of Mars, scientists began analyzing a group of unusual meteorites discovered on Earth. And what a surprise they found. They discovered that trapped gas within these rocks has the same chemistry as the Martian atmosphere as measured by the Viking landers. The scientists then concluded that these meteorites must have come from Mars. So how did they get to Earth? Well. Millions of years ago, giant impacts blasted these rocks from Mars and into the inner solar system. Eventually, a few reached Earth's surface as meteorites. Inside some of these Martian meteorites, scientists found fascinating evidence of possible ancient life forms, visible only with the most powerful microscopes. This ongoing search for past or even present Martian life is the major research focus of the crew who will lift off tomorrow, the crew of Antares. The Antares mission actually began two years ago with the launch of three support spacecraft. Antares 1 is a fully fueled Earth return vehicle. Currently in orbit around Mars, Antares 1 is ready to bring our astronauts home in two years. Antares 2 is the ascent vehicle which will ferry the astronauts from Mars to the return vehicle. It is already in place at the crew's landing site. Its power plant is in good working order and has been producing fuel for the crew's liftoff from Mars. It's also producing extra oxygen for the astronauts to breathe. Antares 3 includes the laboratory where the crew will live and work and the rover which will transport the scientists as they explore the planet. The lab and rover are ready and waiting for the arrival of our astronauts. To prepare for their journey to the Red Planet, the Antares crew has trained together on the International Space Station, practicing every maneuver and rehearsing every emergency as a well-coordinated team. An Earth-to-Mars communication delay of up to 20 minutes increases the need for self-sufficiency. 
Training for long-duration space flight was a major focus of the Russian space station Mir and pioneering astronauts like Shannon Lucid. Dr. Lucid's six months on Mir equals the same time period our astronauts will spend in transit each way to and from Mars. We are proud to introduce the men and women who will walk on Mars. Our commander has primary responsibility for all spacecraft systems in transit and on Mars. Our pilot is in charge of vehicle dynamics in space and rover operations on the Martian surface. Our geologist is a veteran astronaut who has been analyzing rocks and soils from Mars for over a decade. For the last 10 years, our mechanical engineer has maintained life support systems and has controlled robots in Antarctica and on Mars. Our flight surgeon is responsible for crew health and is an expert in performing surgical procedures in microgravity. Our life scientist will focus on the collection of samples that could provide evidence of past or present life on Mars. These astronauts will be on their own more than any astronauts in history as they leave the cradle of planet Earth to step out onto a new world.